Good evening, everyone. Chris Hansen here, and you are having a seat with Chris Hansen live from New York City. What a week and what a show we have for you tonight. First of all, you've probably heard the news, heard the 911 tape. I went out to the uh, Washington State area near Tacoma, along with lawyer Mike Morse. Uh, we knocked on Onision, James, Greg's door. He called 911. You've heard the video, the audio. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But a couple things right off the top. Our, our guest tonight, um, Jacqueline Glenn sensation of YouTube, has a lot to say about Onision, and uh, she's going to tell us all about it tonight. Before we get started, I know that there has been some talk and some negativity on social media and here on YouTube about was it appropriate for us to knock on Onision's door. And I'll tell you this, I may be relatively new to YouTube, but I didn't get into YouTube to practice journalism. I took journalism my brand of it to YouTube to expose alleged predators like Greg, James, Jackson, Onision. That's what this is about. And so we know what the victims are saying because we've talked to them on this program. We know what former collaborators and moderators in the forums with Onision are saying. We're going to continue to lay all this out there because it's important to hold him accountable. I mean, we're talking about someone who you know, is essentially a YouTube psycho brat who for a long time thought he could get away with this. And we're the ones calling him out. Breaking news as well tonight, confirmed from multiple sources and from checking online, Onision is no longer on Twitch, the gaming, gaming platform where he has made a significant amount of money. So he's off of Patreon, off of Twitch. We're still waiting to hear on YouTube. We'll talk about that a little later with attorney Mike Morse. And... Um, the situation continues to get more interesting. So, as I said tonight, we have Jacqueline Glenn with us. We have Mike Morris with us. I'd like to say a quick hello to them now, then jump right into the interview with Jacqueline Glenn. Jacqueline, good evening. Hi. How are you? Good, good. how are you? Thanks for joining us tonight. All right, Thanks good. for having me on. Excellent. Jacqueline, let's start with you. All right. How did Onision first get on your radar? How did you even figure out this guy was out there on YouTube? Well, he made content back in the day, not anymore, that was in some ways similar to mine. He talked a lot about animal rights. He talked about religion. He talked about politics. And that's something that I focus quite a bit of my content on on my channel. And there aren't a lot of people really that do that. There certainly didn't used to be back in the day. So finding another person that talked about things that I took an interest in, you know, naturally, I just kind of stumbled across his channel. So let's talk about you a little bit. How did a college graduate, medical school student, yeah. decided to chuck all that and go to be. <laughs> um, I, I always loved science. I graduated with a degree in biomedical sciences and decided to go to medical school. I had YouTube on the side as just this fun thing that I was doing. And the reason I did it was because I didn't really have anybody at home that I could be open with about my opinions on things. So I took to the internet and somehow people listened. And that was something that I did not expect. It caught me by surprise. And I was unhappy in my situation for a multitude of reasons. And YouTube kind of rescued me from that. So I ran with it, went to LA and have not regretted it ever. Who contacted whom first? Did you reach out to Onision or did he yeah. reach out to you? He reached out to me. He, I guess, had seen one of the videos that I did where I was interviewing different street protesters and he thought it was funny. He decided to send me a DM on Twitter, say that he thought my video was funny, he thought I was smart, and offered to fly me out to his house to do different video collaborations with a couple of other YouTubers. And that was a few months before I flew out there. So, you know, in no time I was kind of already there and making videos with him. I didn't know him at all prior to that. Um, so it was it was definitely new. Did you sense anything odd going into it? Did the guy... I mean, I thought it was odd. Did you either creeps in any way? Did your radar go mm, on? Not, not for me personally. I did think it was interesting. I've never had a situation where someone was like, I'll fly you out to my house. Um, that, I mean, that's that, pretty forward, but I guess if you're collaborating yeah. in a video media endeavor, it's not unheard of. 
it's well my parents were concerned they're like so you don't know this person and this guy is flying you out to his house they thought it was a little weird um, but you know I didn't think anything of it I'm like you exactly what you said it's YouTube people collaborate all the time you know I thought he was nice to offer to do that and I, I went for it uh, it was a little odd when I was there for a few reasons um, he got into a few fights with one of the other girls that was there. She flew out, uh, her YouTube channel is Hey Nadine. She flew out as well and he was really, really angry with her at dinner one night because she wore high heels and it turned into this really uncomfortable fight. What uh, did he do just because she wore high heels? He was trying to say how women shouldn't wear high heels because it's unhealthy and it's not good for your foot arch support and all of this really, like, it, it felt very random to me, uh, but he was, so angry with her for for wearing shoes that he didn't like it just seemed a little excessive over the top and controlling and how did you get along with him during this visit it it seemed fine uh, we really were working almost the entire time we were filming all day for the few days that i was there so there wasn't really a lot of downtime to hang out um, he was, he was really nice. He was really nice to all of us while we were there, except for Nadine in that one moment. Um, I know that he was fighting with his spouse at the time. So that was a little uncomfortable. Now this, uh, was he married to Kai at the time or was this yes. before Kai? So he was married to Kai, Lainey. And take me inside that house. What was the relationship? I see you roll your eyes. Uh, it's, it's just, I, bizarre. what was the relationship between yeah. Onishian and Kai. It was definitely odd. You could feel the tension. It was uncomfortable. And I remember we were in the car driving somewhere. Uh, it was just Onision, me, and then the two other YouTubers that were there to collaborate. And he was talking about his relationship with his spouse and saying that, you know, at times things get really heated and they fight. And if he calls her a name or does something extremely insulting. He gives her a hundred dollars and that just makes everything better. And I was like, that's really wait, weird. Wait, wait, especially wait, wait, since they're married. He just, pay, he just pays her a hundred dollars. Well, at the time, I don't know if that's still going on, but he thought it was brilliant. I've come up with a solution that when we fight or I'm horrible to my spouse, I just pay a hundred bucks. And, and how and would Kai did. react when he gave her a hundred bucks? Or gave I was bucks. not around for that end of things. I just, you know, I was there in the car when he was talking about that arrangement. And yeah, that, that doesn't seem like a healthy relationship. Also odd since they're married, you would expect their finances to be kind of shared. So I didn't really understand. Did you ever get any one-on-one -on -one time with Kai? I didn't. I actually, there was barely any time we were together at all. I, Kai was there for a moment when um, we were kind of relaxing for a little bit at the end of one day. Um, but I didn't really have much of a conversation there. They, uh, the, their son was there at the time and I, I was playing with him. He was really cute. Uh, I was telling you this before the stream, but he thought it was so funny because I was taking one of the pillows from the couch and balancing it on my head and then it would fall and he would giggle and I'd be like, oh my goodness, and he's so cute, which makes me feel terrible. But Kai was sitting there for that and silent, but that was really my only interaction. How was the child cared for uh, at the time? Just the one child, the son, now two children living in the house. Uh, yeah, when I was there, it was just just the one. Um, he seemed, he was a kid, he seemed happy. I, I know that they had someone come over to care for him quite a bit, even though they were both, I think, home often. But I think at the time, Kai was in school also. So they had someone around quite a bit. How long did you actually stay on that first visit? I think it was there three days. Three days. And how many videos did you make during those three days? Several, five or six, um, you know, because there were four of us. So each one of us did a video on our channel. I think Onision did a few. Um, yeah, there were a lot, a lot of videos. Bad, there were bad videos, but right. <laughs> I'm and embarrassed. Give me, <laughs> give me a sense of what the videos were about. Were they just silly? Were they, was there a yeah. message? They were silly. Uh, one of them was he does these like Batman skits. I don't know. Uh, that was weird. That was one of the videos. One that actually did make me uncomfortable was uh, there was a video we did about like an abusive relationship. And I was the girl that played the, you know, 
role of the one that kind of got abused in that relationship. And there were scenes of me, you know, pretending to get punched in the face and like kicked on the ground. And, you know, I, I thought, I guess I was like, okay, you know, it's a silly skit. It doesn't really mean anything. But, but it's now still it violence weird. against yeah, it's violence against women, right? It feels it feels weird now, uh, yeah. looking back. You know, at, at the time, like I said, I'm embarrassed about all of this. But at the time, you know, this is somebody that I had been watching on YouTube. I was excited to get to make videos with a group of people. That wasn't really something that I I got a whole lot of before then. Uh, so I was really looking forward to it. You know, when you're in that situation and everybody's kind of fine with what's happening, you seem fine too, because it just feels normal. And, you know, if he had turned out to not be a super creep, I think maybe still I'd be like, eh, whatever, it was a weird video, but nothing too serious. But in this context, now finding out all these things about him, I, I am kind of, I don't know, I guess it, it's a little uncomfortable to think about. How did the videos do? when you put them on your channel? Um, they did okay. They didn't go viral or do super well. I think it, it got a little over 100,000 views, but it didn't you know, break the internet or anything. Right. And so what happened between you and Greg after the the video, which, which look, you know, you can look back and say that was a mistake, but you know, it seemed to make sense at the time. You're trying to get into this sphere. He's a big deal in this sphere. I mean, yeah, you look at, you know, I'm a banana, you know, it's just so stupid. But at the time, it got a lot of attraction. It got a lot it of is. views. It was a big deal. And so why wouldn't you at least go collaborate with somebody who was, you know. That was my logic behind it. Very popular at the time. Yeah. That's why I, I went for it, you know. And I honestly, even even leaving that situation, I'm like, that was, you know. It was fine. It was a fine experience. Right. I got to meet new people that do what I like to do. And I, you know, like I said, when I started YouTube, I did that because I felt like there weren't people around me that I could relate to or talk with about how I felt. So to be in a, a collaborative situation with other people that share my interests, just it was right. really exciting for me to be able to do that. Well, it's like you a know, filmmaker I, hanging out in LA or, or yeah. Brooklyn here in New York City. I mean, that's where, so, that's where young people go. I left so, feeling, feeling, you know, fine about the experience and that's why I got so caught off guard when he turned so nasty on me on the internet that just I was like really I, I thought I was there not long ago and things were fine and now you're acting like we're way closer friends than we were and really upset with me for things when that you, have nothing to do with you when you say turned on you tell me exactly what happened how did he turn on you I, through my, through my YouTube network, sometimes they will recommend people to collaborate with. And they set up a collaboration with me and another YouTuber that I eventually started dating. And when we posted our collaboration together, Onision kind of lost his mind a little bit. Lost he, his mind. Yeah, it was weird. But it wasn't what only... Way, what way did he lose his mind? Just he, he was very, very publicly angry online. And it wasn't just at me. It was at anybody that was in any kind of association with my ex at the time. Any friends, anybody making any kind of videos. And he didn't, you know, have any problem calling people out and just cutting people off. And he, he made a big deal about it. Not that anyone really cared all that much, but he unfollowed people on Twitter and, you know, just made a really big deal about it and was kind of harassing people and saying, if you associate with this person, you're a bad person. And, and what did he say, Jacqueline? What did he do to you? Um, well, that was just the beginning of the stuff that he started saying to me. Um, you know, obviously I didn't obey Onision, which I think is kind of what, almost almost that's what he expected. He thought he was going to tell me, I don't like this person. And I was going to be like, oh, okay, well, in that case, since Onision doesn't approve, then I'm just going to back off from this. It was ridiculous. Um, so I, I obviously I didn't. And he was really, really angry, really angry with me that I continued on with this relationship to the point of finding things to nitpick about me and my personal decisions and blaming it on 
that relationship and saying that I was being controlled and manipulated and all of these really terrible things. Granted, it was a bad relationship. It did end horribly. Um, but the things that he was accusing me of at the time were untrue. Why do you think he did it? Was he jealous? Did he want to get know. with you? I don't, I, I don't you, know. Was he upset that you were getting so popular? Uh, I, I really don't understand the, the motives behind it. People have said before that, you know, maybe he has a crush on you and he's being controlling because of that. But I never, ever had any interactions with him that would lead me to believe that other than the- He never hit of, on you in any no, way. No, no, nothing ever like that. With nothing inappropriate sexually. No. So, you know, the only thing kind of leading people to that conclusion was how overly invested he was in my personal life. And it, it was weird. I have never in my life experienced this, nor should anyone, uh, where someone, a, a grown man goes on the internet and makes countless videos about your boobs, um, about the way that you look, uh, shaming you for your height. Uh, what, did he really say about, what did he say about your breasts? Online? He, okay, well, I don't know. Right through the privilege to, to do that. No, I don't know. I don't know how anybody in their right mind would feel like they could say the things that he said. Um, but you know, I, I had to like process all of this. It even caused tension in my family because in the videos that he would make about me, he would say the only reasons, you know, that, that you have any insecurities about yourself or that you would act on those insecurities is because your family, your parents specifically don't love you. What did or, he do about your parents? Or your nothing, family? nothing. I, it, so he's making this stuff up. Yeah. Was he, he stalking you, Jacqueline, in a way? Stalking? Uh, no. I mean, he, well. I mean, online on, on video. On, on he social. was texting me a lot. He was texting me a lot. So not only was I being harassed for being in this relationship online publicly, but I had to block his number because it was just, it was overwhelming. It was just constant like, berating me for not listening to him. You actually blocked Onision? Yes. Yes, I had to. He would not stop texting the harassment me. Was he that was texting bad. me nasty things. Yeah. So I had to just block him. Give me a sense of something he texted you that just blew you away, <sighs> that shocked you, that offended you, that made you wonder, how did I get involved creatively with this guy? All, all, of, all of the things he said made me second guess my decisions to associate give with me, him. Give me a sense of it. Give me one thing. I or mean, it was, it was almost 100% based on him trying to convince me to leave the relationship that I was in. And why does he even think he can tell you that you should or should not be in a relationship? Where is he going to be? He's a married guy living in a home with children. And I mean, did it go to okay. his head? Was he manipulative? Was he trying to form a cult? All of the above? <laughs> Probably all of the above. Yeah. I don't think any rational person behaves in that way. You know, I, I, it's bizarre and super, it was super uncomfortable for me, you know, because I, you know, then I, I, I try to stand up for myself when I feel like I'm being mistreated and I definitely felt like he was mistreating me. So it turned into me feeling the need to defend myself because unfortunately, even though he is as ridiculous as he is, he does still have a very large, well, maybe not so much anymore, but had a large following of people that would take what he would say in a video and then just attack. So I was getting so many people coming after me telling me that uh, I needed to end my relationship, that I did this or that wrong with my body, and that I was, you know, a horrible person basically. Uh, you know, and, and it was overwhelming. So I got to the point where I'm like, that's it. I have to stand up for myself. I have to make a video. So it was like a weird back and forth and it turned into way more drama than I could have ever hoped for. Um, Did you feel violated by Onision? It was, it, a lot of it was humiliating, you know, like to, to have someone, you know, a, a guy that's older than you go on the, on the internet and, and, and talk about God, he, he would even, he would make like these animated videos even, or, or even play Sims games where he would make characters of me and like 
exaggerate the size of that character's breasts and at the end of the video be like that's why you should always listen to Onision, Jacqueline, always listen to Greg and it was like that was really creepy too. So I don't really understand the MO there. I don't know what he was trying to do. I honestly think that he is just the type of person that is controlling and wants to be in this weird dynamic with every woman that he's just able to tell people what to do. I don't know what gives him the right or, or makes him think that he should be able to behave that way, but he does. Tell me about the video that you made in response to this harassment by Onision. What did you do? I think you cut off for a second. Tell me about the video that you made in response to Onision. What did you say? What did you do in the video? I mean, a little, the uh, video that I made uh, in response, yeah, uh, the video I made was just, I was upset. I was very visibly angry. I just wanted to kind of put it out there that you you don't know what is going on in my personal life behind the scenes. We're not really all that close of friends. I actually in the video I was saying you need to stop texting me. Like the texts need to stop. It's overwhelming. Please stop trying to contact me. I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. Leave me alone. That didn't work. So I ended up having to block him anyway. But you know, I just had to, to defend myself and say that the decisions I was making were my own and that he needed to not be judging my family and me and putting all of this speculation out on the internet that was just going to lead to more harassment. How bad did it get with Onision for you? I think it cut off again. I'm sorry. Would you mind how bad that? did it? How bad did it get between Onision and you? Oh, it got really, it got pretty bad to the point of him tweeting. I really, really terrible things, not only about me. And I, I felt kind of bad because it extended to women beyond me. He would say things like women that are tall or disgusting, um, you know, and I'm five, nine, that information is, is out there. So anybody that's my height or taller, all these girls were like sad and now full of these insecurities. Um, you know, and you know, he would talk about how disgusting it is if someone gets plastic surgery and just really throwing me under the bus. Um, at the time, my ex had a problem with the way he was behaving and would tweet, you know, please stop obsessing over Jacqueline. It's, it's weird and creepy and, you know, or something along those lines. And Onision would then respond saying, I want nothing to do with your disgusting tall girlfriend that's too skinny and, you know, her boobs are this and that and like, oh, she's gross and I hate her. <laughs> like, you know, along those lines, it was just a lot, a lot. Who, who um, does who does something like this, Jacqueline? What kind uh, of a person? Not a great one. Not a great one. And I think the the peak of it was whenever I ended up going through a very public breakup with this person that was uh, unfaithful to me. And Onision then went on a really long rant on a live stream where he was basically celebrating that I was going celebrating through that. Celebrating the fact that your relationship ended yeah, was a because, really tragic, bad breakup. Yeah, and I that messed me up for a long time. And you know, then he goes online and is basically giving himself a nice pat on the back saying, well, I told you so, I'm always right. See, you should have listened, which is, again, it's weird, weird and creepy, but he was throwing himself a little party. Um, congratulating Happy your relationship went to hell. Yeah, yeah, after, I, I made a video online, you know, because I had a very public relationship, so I had to kind of make some kind of announcement and explain that we weren't together anymore. And I was very emotional in that and self-critical and sad. And it's a really sad video. And his response to that was, see, I'm always right. And he was celebrating. He was happy. You told me earlier about an incident where Onision, Greg, James came to LA where you were living yes. at the time. And it, it, it creeped me out. I can only imagine and it yeah. creeped you out as well. Explain to, to me and everybody watching right now what happened. Well, 
I might need to give a bit of backstory. Yeah, please that. do. Um, uh, you know, you live and you learn, you, you grow up. And I have in the past made a lot of poor choices in my relationships. I will admit that I have learned and grown from that. And now I'm doing great. But previous to the bad relationship I just spoke of, I was in one before it that was also very unhealthy. And I, I had to end that relationship and cut off communication with that guy as well, because it, it crossed a lot of my boundaries. You know, after we broke up, he would still show up to my apartment. He would break into my apartment complex and leave notes on my car. Uh, you know, he would. Stalking. It, it was a lot. Yeah, it was. I, w I would. I would worry when I would go home that he might be there. Um, so and I had that happen before, too, where I would pull up to, you know, my apartment complex and his car would be there. And I it was a lot. It was overwhelming. And Onision knew about that. Whenever I went and collaborated with Onision, same same guy tr was contacting Damien, another one of the YouTubers that was there, asking for Onision's address because he wanted to send me flowers while I was at Onision's house to try to make me get back into the relationship or something like that. And Onision was, he, you know, seemed to have a normal reaction to that to me. He was like, that's really weird. You know, this guy is pushing it too far. Yeah to the point of trying to get my address to send you flowers, that's just weird, which I was like, yeah, that is weird. Um, you know, and Onision knew that I was struggling because, you know, that relationship had ended and I had a lot of insecurities because I've ha had a bad history with relationships. And I, I did talk about, I did open up a little bit about my fears and my, my worries of, of being in another relationship where I would get cheated on or mistreated in some way which I feel like I definitely should not have done because then he knew that I was insecure in this area of my life. He knew that I had a history of struggling with this and having some issues around that, um, trusting myself, valuing myself. And I think that he capitalized on that. He knew that I had this weakness. He exploited you. Yeah. You know, and I feel like that's why he was trying to be so hurtful to me online in those areas because he knew that it was a, a weak spot for me. Um, and he knew, so he so knew he that, out, but he comes out to LA. Yeah. So this is, I'm in the next relationship of, right. uh, you know, he, this is years later, he comes to LA and stays with the ex that tried to send me flowers. So the bad ex who conducted all this harassment, stalking that he knew about, that he knew about, he comes out, Onision comes out to LA and stays with the bad ex. I know they were together. Um, they were hanging out at least. They were at least they hanging were. out. Yeah. Um, and so what happens then? I don't know. I remember I, I saw them post something online together and I was really weirded out. I was really uncomfortable. I should say so. And I, I just kind of ignored it because I didn't want to fuel that fire. I just wanted that to go away. Um, and I thought it had for the most part, nothing really happened. So I just kind of brushed it off as, as a nothing. But, uh, in October of last year, Onision sent me a really creepy email, um, that I, I can read if you would like. Yeah. I'd like to hear it. Would you read it for me? Sure. And you can, so describe... this is the email just this past October. Yes, October 23rd, 2019. Okay. Um, subject, hey, Jacqueline. Next. Remember how we did a Skype a while back and just talked about things? Like dot, dot, dot. Most of it, I think, was about your last breakup. I wanted to do a Skype with you about something I think I probably should have told you about a long time ago. It's about creepy ex with flowers. But I don't want it recorded or passed on or anything. What I get out of it is a personal question answered. What happened was a really awkward moment he and I had that I wanted to kind of figure out because it was weird, dot, 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 and involves your location at the time. I know this is all very odd sounding, but it would be cool to clear it up person to person and basically let you know what happened that no one knows but, about but me and two other people. It's not a big deal. I just figured you would want to know, not as a YouTuber or anything, but as a person like real life. So anyway, suddenly he's being a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I'm right off. Continue, with the, continue with the email. Um, anyway, if you want to talk again, not to be passed on by a video or anything, whoops, 
um, any of our channels, not on social media, nothing. Just for two people to talk so you in your own life know what happened. Again, I cannot stress enough, not for any public reason, confidential, etc., but just let me know. Sometimes we forget you and I are both people with real issues in our lives that don't impact or reflect on the internet. Like I have this whole thing with you publicly, beef or whatever, but in reality, I still care about you and your safety slash who you are. So I want to sort this out. But again, so because, he is, because he cares so much about your safety, he comes out and hangs out with an ex who is stalked and harassed you. So, yeah. And apparently they were in talks about something that involved my location at the time, which my ex knew where I lived. So that, that is uh, a little worrisome. How does he wrap up that email? There's one little paragraph left. But again, if you ignore this, I do not at all think you are not safe. The topic has passed. And if you don't want to talk, I'm sure you are fine. Just figured you want to know about what has been in the back of my mind for a while regarding you and what he tried to have me do. Please, please don't share any of this. I'm not trying to be at odds with him. I just want you to know that's it. So the suggestion seems to be that the bad ex harasser stalker tried to get Onision to do something to you when the two of them were together in LA, which is where you were living at the time. That's, you know, what, what he said in, in this email is all I have to go off of. He mentions my safety twice and says it involves my location at the time. So putting all those things together, it it is very weird. I have moved since then. I no longer live in that spot. So I feel a lot better getting this email, just knowing that I'm not there anymore, but it still does bother me. Did you ever respond to that email from no, Onision? No, I have not responded at all. He actually sent me one after that, I think in December, which is the, I made a video about it, the same email he sent to me and Blair and Repsion, and I think you, um, we all got the same email, but that's the last correspondence that he sent me. Repsion and Blair, obviously people who have appeared on this show as well, along with many of the alleged victims of Onision, Sarah and Shiloh and and uh, Billy and and uh, so many so many others, Isla and and uh, um, really eye opening and and uh, in some ways tragic, but but important interviews. You know some of these people. Yes, I do. What do you say about them? How would you? How would you characterize what he did to these young women? Predatory, you know, horrible. I feel for them. Um, you know, Isla and Billy, I've never met Billy. I've, I've never met Isla either, but I've had conversations with her and, you know, she's a really sweet person. And I can tell that this has taken a toll on her and, you know, it affects everybody deeply and I, I feel for them. I feel like a maternal towards them. I'm older than these girls. I feel like at least I, you know, have maybe a, a thicker layer of skin just because I've been doing YouTube for a long time and I haven't had any actual personal interactions with Onision outside of the collaboration and weird public things. You know, I haven't gone through what they've gone through and I feel so bad for them, but they are from everything I've experienced, sweet people and, you know, nobody deserves, nobody deserves that. Looking back, knowing what you know now, knowing what you know about some of these alleged victims, do you think that he progressed from his odd behavior with you to actually becoming a predator and 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 really exploiting young, vulnerable women? Uh, yeah, I, I do think he is a predator that exploits young women. But I, I think that was going on probably long before I collaborated with him. I, I think now it's becoming public. But, you know, even whenever he got married to Kai, you know, I don't remember how old, but I think younger than 18. Yeah. Kai was younger than 18. Like that, that's really young. I mean, if you have to look up the age of consent in a state, then maybe you're pushing it a little bit. Uh, that's really young. And I, I listened to some of the things that he had done to his ex-wife as well. That's scary. And the way that he kind of tried to bash her online to make himself look better so that he could manipulate his way through the divorce process and things like that. You know, it's, it seems like he's always been this person, 
but the internet, myself included, we're just now finding out how bad it is. In the case of Sarah, Onisha and Kai actually sought and obtained guardianship. Yeah, that that's bizarre. That's, you know, I really hope Sarah's okay. I can't imagine what it would be like to be in a situation with family that you try to escape and you think you found these people, these friends that care about you, that can help you escape a toxic situation, but they were pulling her into something even worse. I can't imagine going through that. And I'm, you know, I, I saw her speak about it several times and she seems strong. I'm, I'm very impressed with what she's been able to do. I was impressed when she appeared on this show. I mean, it, it's yeah. amazing what all of the young women went through, even the young women who didn't actually go visit, but who had, you know, relationships online or were enticed into sending explicit photos. Yeah. Some that's, of whom were that makes me sick to think about. I, you know, and Kai took part in this too, allegedly, according to the victims. Yeah, there, there is not enough focus on that aspect of things. I know everybody wants to hop on the "Hey Onision" bandwagon. I'm there too, but there's a bigger picture. And and while I do think there is an element of people feeling sorry for Kai, at what point do you view someone doing these predatory things as as a victim or a predator? Like I know that there's a fine line there, and I feel I feel bad for what Kai must have. There's no way, <laughs> there's no way that's been a beautiful relationship the whole time. I feel bad for those negative experiences. I'm sure they were very hard, but in my opinion, that does not excuse this type of behavior. And I don't think that we should forget that there's another person that's a very huge part of this entire situation. Do you think Kai is a predator as well? Yes, I do. I mean, if you are sending, if you're sending inappropriate photos and receiving inappropriate photos from someone who is underage, that's the definition of it, right? I mean, there's there's not a nicer way to, to say that. It's also the definition of transmission of sexu sexually explicit material, child porn, which is a federal offense carrying 10 years per charge yeah. conviction. Yeah, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot there, and I'm I'm glad people are talking about it. I hope that he can't do this to anybody else. I hope that something can happen to prevent this from ever happening to anyone again. As of right now, he still has a YouTube channel. You know, I know that he's not on Twitch anymore. He's not on Patreon anymore, but he's still very much present online. And what does it say that he's first of all? off Patreon. Uh, to me, and again, you know more about this than I do, but to me, Patreon is a little bit more the wild, wild west where you can get away with more. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's that's the impression I get. And for him to be taken off there, but still allowed to be on YouTube, it's alarming. That certainly is alarming. Uh, Patreon, I do think they obviously care the type of people that are representing their platform by being on there. I know that you can post, you know, not safe for work stuff on there. You can you can post all kinds of things and it's fine, but obviously they're not going to put up with illegal activity. And if, you know, if he's doxing people, I think they probably, if this is pure speculation, I feel like they probably were trying to find some reason to remove him from the site for a while. And when he docks somebody, that's that's all they needed to be able to go through with that. Did you listen to the 911 tape that uh, was made when I knocked on his door? I in, did. Uh, Washington State. I did. I listened to it. It was very entertaining, to say the least. What struck you about Onision on that tape? He was scared. He was panicking. Um, and pretty... Uh, pretty dumb to call the cops, by the way, in that situation. Like, you're basically putting yourself <laughs> into more contact with law enforcement, which I don't think probably is the best choice for him. But, yeah, he he seemed pretty freaked out on the phone, and he was saying, it's, it's Chris Hansen. He's here. He's knocking on my door. He Oh, he was calling you a stalker. 
which is I find that ironic. So yeah, <laughs> definitely ironic. But yeah, he was he was probably sweating a little bit there. Was there anything he said that struck you as uh, that's the Onision I know? All of it, honestly. I mean, he was trying he to does, flip the script, basically. Yeah, he does this thing, and he's has a history of doing this where even though he does horrible things, he in his own mind thinks that he can convince the world, whether it's the internet or the police, that he's somehow the victim in all of this. You know, he has a history of kind of doing this online too, where basically anybody he's ever worked with, he has turned on at some point. And then he'll decide, you know, enough negativity, I'm going to make a video acting as though I've changed my ways and I'm a better person now and I'm going to apologize. And I've, I try to be a forgiving person. I've even accepted his apologies before just to kind of bury the drama and move on, which was a mistake. But he does that a lot where he apologizes. He, you know, acts like he, he made a mistake and he says he's sorry, but he will inevitably turn around and do the exact same thing that he was apologizing for. So it's, it's never real. It's never true, but he has spent quite a bit of time trying to learn how to make people see him as the good guy, even though he isn't and he has no intention of being. Knowing him as you do, knowing this world as you do, what's his next play? What does he do next? So long as he's allowed to stay on YouTube, I think he'll keep making YouTube videos. I don't think he's going anywhere. I think he is obviously doing things to grab attention. You know, I don't think he really is having these panic attack freakouts where he genuinely wants to pour kombucha all over himself. I don't think that he would actually rip off his clothes and be crazy. You know, I think that he's trying to do these things. And, you know, one of those videos has over a million views. That makes money. So I think he's just going to keep doing things on YouTube that get enough attention to make him money, whether it's acting like he himself is having some kind of mental breakdown or he's exploiting somebody else's weaknesses or making hate videos on somebody or just just doing something that is somehow a surprise to people that he would go that far. It's always, you know, you, you expect the worst from somebody like that, but then he does something else and you're like, wow. Well, it's, I, it's, I, don't, I don't know how he comes up with this stuff. I mean, when we were trying to talk to him in, in Washington State, I'm going to get into this in, in a few minutes with Mike Morris, who was, who was there with me. He actually did a video in a hotel room from Tacoma where he not just insinuated, but basically said that his breakdown and his his mental problems resulted partly from the fact that a dog had sex with him. I mean, how do you even how does a mind even work? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. I, he's <laughs> I mean, besides just being crude, offensive, and untrue as a star. Yeah. It's just I don't, it's, what, what, I don't believe anything he says. Like you said, it's right. it's crude, it's untrue, and it is exactly what I said. He's he's doing when you think you've seen it all, he'll throw something else ridiculous out there to try to get attention and views. And it works. You know, I I hate that. I wish I wish that people just expected that he's doing all of this for attention and ignored it and moved on. Do you worry about the kids in that house? Do you worry about I Kai? Do. do you think Kai's complicit? Let's start with the kid. You worry about the kids? Of course. Still young. Of course I worry about the kids. I mean, even if they treat the kids wonderfully, which I don't, I'm not going to say anything about that. Even if that were true, the amount of things that he has done to people that is now public knowledge is something that they will find out about. It's only a matter of time before they see their father on the internet being accused of being predatory to so many girls and then hearing their stories. There's, I can't imagine the toll that would take on your psyche. You know, we've uncovered a lot. We've had a lot of brave young women come forward and tell their story. Do you think we've got a handle on everything he's done? Do you think we've no. even scratched the surface here? I don't. I don't. 
I think that there's probably a lot more. And I hope that uh, I hope that everything comes to the surface, you know, because as long as he can get away with what he's doing, he'll continue to do it and there will be another girl. So I'm hopeful that I'm hopeful that he gets caught for everything. He put out a tweet about you and Blair White, who's a friend of the show, who's been yeah. on and, and uh, who we like a lot, yeah. just like we like you. Um, what was that all about? Tell me what it was and uh, make sense. I don't know. I have no idea what he's trying to do. He posted a picture of me and Blair, and I don't remember what it said verbatim, but it was on the lines of, you know, if you don't think these two women are sexy, I don't know, something like that. It was weird, especially since he has made countless tweets making fun of me and my body, you know, saying that I'm ugly, you know, for him to post that, I'm just like, what are you doing? But again, it's, it's attention. He's trying to get attention. He's trying to just, what's the next crazy thing I can post on Twitter? What's the next ridiculous YouTube video that I can make that will get me attention? He loves it. Have you ever had another bad experience with any other YouTuber like this? Not like this. Not like this at all. Um, this is, I'm always surprised and I, I'm surprised that I'm surprised because he does things that are terrible all of the time, but nothing has ever, I don't think there's anybody that's ever done the things that he's doing. Like it, I can handle it when people are terrible to me. It's not like I enjoy it, but I feel like it doesn't make me lose sleep at night. But when you start affecting people that I care about is where I just lose it uh, and just have no understanding. You know, he spent a long time harassing a friend of mine online, making videos, making fun of her, really, really ugly things and harassing me, harassing other people to get this person help. And then when it came time to actually following through with that, he actively tried to ruin that. You know, he posted screenshots of sensitive information that could have ruined everything. He was, he amped up the harassment that could have made everything fall apart. You know, and this is a person that he had himself made fun of and then harassed me and other people to get this person help. And then when it actually came time to do that, he got in the way, which means that everything that he had said prior to that, acting like he cared about this person's well-being, everything he said harassing me and my friends to do something was wrong because when it came time to doing it, he tried to mess everything up for us. So that to me, like everything he's done to me prior to that is awful. I didn't enjoy it, but that is just psycho. That is horrible. Uh, it is, I can't, go ahead. I'm sorry. I know. I just, I can't, I can't wrap my brain around that one. Is he the worst human being <laughs> in the history of YouTube? There have been some, there have been some bad YouTubers out there. You know, there's the Austin Joneses of the world. Um, there are a lot of, unfortunately, there are a lot of bad people on YouTube. Um, he's the worst one that I've interacted with. Uh, definitely done things that are incomprehensible to me. Um, but it does worry me too, because YouTube has now become a place where people like that can still thrive. And I think it sends a, a kind of a scary message to the rest of the people out there that are not good people that, hey, I can use this platform to gain some kind of a following that I can then use to manipulate people. What do you say to Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube? <laughs> well, I would say a lot to her. Uh, you know, they, they spend so much time trying to improve YouTube. They do all these updates. You know, they never focus on demonetization. They do these subscriber purges. It seems like they waste a lot of time. I can't think of anything more important than keeping people like Onision that are actively using this platform to prey on young girls. I don't understand why they don't 
do something about that. How is anything, how is anything more important than that? You know, young people are using this platform and you know that it appeals to a very young demographic of people that you're allowing predators to gain access to and you do nothing. It's very frustrating. And like I said, I think as long as he's allowed to stay on the platform, he will use it and he will hurt people. Why do you think Susan Wojcicki appears on other YouTube channels, other shows, but refuses to appear on this show? Well, I don't, I really don't understand. I don't understand the hesitation in taking action on something like this. Like if she, I mean, she appears on other people's shows to yeah. talk about how she's bilingual and happy, happy this. And yeah, it's, it's a PR move. You know, she wants to, to get people to like her because there's a lot of people that don't. Um, this happens to be a topic that she's probably scared to discuss publicly, but I wish she weren't. If she, if she did and spoke about this and actually took action, she would be a hero. People it seems would love like this her. would be the proper form to do it. Yeah. I'd certainly I mean, give her a fair shake. There's no I way that that wouldn't look, be great I get, for her. I get that it's virtually ungovernable. I get you don't want to censor people. I'll fight for anybody's right. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, me too. If someone says something I, I disagree with, more power right. to them. You know, but being I'm, a predator is something else. Yeah. If Greg is listening to this stream right now, what do you say to him? It's hard to say this without sounding condescending, but I really truly do hope that he, he gets help. Um, and he takes an honest look at what he's done and actually self reflects. And not in a way that he's gonna turn around and go back on in a few months, in a real way, in a real honest human way. Think of the people that you've hurt and understand how that can last a lifetime you know, that type of manipulation and predatory action on young women, that can that can hurt them and their psychology for a lifetime. And it seems like he doesn't acknowledge any of that. He thinks it's all a game. So I would I guess I would just really hope that he would take a look inward and find it within himself to seek professional help. And what advice, Jacqueline, do you give to young women, either streamers? or people who, young women who watch YouTube, more and more young people are getting their news, information, entertainment from YouTube. What do you say to young women out there who might be vulnerable and susceptible to somebody who, at least in some circles, comes off as charismatic, might be a celebrity to some people? I don't want, I don't want people to walk around in, in fear and always expect the worst, but you should really be careful with everybody that you interact with, you know, and I'm not saying expect every person is an Onision, but there are bad people in the world. And just because someone is bubbly on the internet or you think they're cool because they have a following, it doesn't mean that they are not a bad person. And you, you'll know if they ask you to do something that makes you uncomfortable, don't do it. And I, I just wish, I wish people didn't, care so much about followers. It didn't care about how popular someone was. You know, it, it, we're all people. Everybody is just a person. No one is worth compromising your own values for ever. So I just really hope that if you're young and you look up to somebody, don't just go along with what they say because you idolize them. Nobody is worth idolizing. And you should, you should definitely stick to your values and not compromise those because you're in a situation where you feel pressured. It's so hard. It's so hard, though. It's so, it's so much easier said than done. But I promise no one is that cool. No one is worth it. Jacqueline, Glenn, thank you so much for being with us tonight on Have a Seat. Um, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate your insight. Will you promise that you'll come back on soon? Of course. I would love to. Thank you for having me on. I think that... My pleasure.
it what was you're doing is great. In, Hopefully insightful it... and smart and, and very good, Jacqueline. Thank you very much, Thank Jacqueline, you. Glenn, everyone. I'd like to now switch gears and talk to attorney Mike Morris, who's been standing by taking it all in just by way of background. In case you don't know, I appeared on Mike's show, Open Mike, uh, some weeks back. Uh, Mike is a lawyer, high profile lawyer uh, who works out of Detroit. We have a number of people in common. I appeared on his show. We started talking about potential collaboration. The next thing you know, I was receiving intel about what Onision was up to, and, and uh, we've been trying for a long time to get him to have a seat and do an interview. I received some information. We had a narrow window to pursue it. Mike jumped on board to help in a number of ways, logistically and, and uh, legally. And so last week, um, on Wednesday morning early, we went to Tacoma, Washington. We had been told initially that uh, Greg James Onision was uh, hiding out in a, in, a rental in a rental home. Then it turned into a hotel in Tacoma. We had actually been able to match up through some sources and some people helping us out, pillows and window hangings, uh, window, windows and, and, and views outside of windows and wall hangings that matched up. He was definitely at that hotel making videos, but he wasn't there when we got there, was he, Mike? No, we, we don't know when he was making those videos. I think that my impression after leaving was that he could have shot those weeks before. Um, we talked to lots of hotel personnel. We made friends with the valet and the people at the front desk, and they hadn't seen him in a while. The car, they have a very specific Tesla, and, and, and that, that hadn't been seen by the valet. We talked to the valet who'd been there for several days. The posting of his last uh, video from the hotel 21st floor because that hotel had specific artists on every floor he wasn't there there was only two rooms occupied i had one he and the and the other one wasn't his so the bottom line was he was posting videos to make it look like it was that day but at, and making him look homeless and bouncing around from airbnbs to hotels but he was home with his partner and children and dogs and other people so it was just a big, it was just a big game. It was just a big uh, con. Ultimately, we decided to knock on the door. A protocol was followed, one that I have followed for many years. And as uh, some people on social media observed, you know, if Chris Hansen was going to break the law or do something bad, why would he bring a lawyer with him <laughs> to watch right. this? You know, so it wouldn't make sense, would it? No, it wouldn't. So and just I'm not going to let you break the law. Yeah, exactly. So. I hope not. Um, and just to be clear. When we walked up to the house, I mean, we tried to be as polite as uh, six or eight people can be with camera gear and microphones and, and all kinds of things. You and all the camera and sound people stood on the street. I walked up, knocked on the door. Um, I heard, I saw what who I thought was Kai walking down the stairs. It was frosted glass. Uh, didn't jump out, didn't shout, didn't scream just offered an opportunity to talk. Then I could hear Greg on the phone calling 911. Um, when we listened to the tape that we received after the fact, which ended up being so important in so many ways in this investigation as we continue it, he uses words like trespass, libel, slander, stalker. As a lawyer, you've listened to this tape. What do you make of that? What are your impressions? Well, I've, I listened to it a few times. It was it was exciting to get it because all we had on the ground last week was your what you thought you could hear, you know, through the door with the dogs barking and all the commotion. And so you did come back and report that you thought you heard him in the house. You weren't one hundred percent sure. It wasn't confirmed until we heard the tapes early Monday morning. So let's go through a couple of things. You know, first of all, he told the nine one one person that uh, we were, you were a YouTube stalker. And you know, a stalker is just an unwanted pursuit of another person, which right. is obviously laughable. He has put out several tweets that he wants to talk to you. He wants to sit down with you. He wants to interview you. You want to interview him and he's invited you. So the stalking thing is absolutely ridiculous. He told the 911 caller that um, the reason you were there because he broke up with a, a 19 year old friend and he didn't 18, want to hang out 19. with her. Was it really fishy about that? I, I don't know. You know, I'm not. Why I, he went there? Why did he go there? Well, because obviously he must have been referring to, and again, I, you know, I don't want to put, you know, 
pretend like I'm in his mind and who knows how it is thinks. But it seemed to me, and I'll get your legal take on this and your impressions, um, that he knew we were after him, obviously, because of the relationships and that he was tipping his hat to that in some way to get out of trouble emotionally, psychologically. But it, it didn't make much sense. It was kind of a weak attempt at it, I thought. But go ahead. See, you're giving him a little bit more credit because I don't think if he was doing that, he would know he's being recorded. Why would he have called 911 to create this tape? Because he sounded completely sane. He said a lot of things that weren't true. Um, he talked about this person that he was breaking up with having a mental disorder, not wanting her, her in, a life, uh, in his life. He talked about slander, that he's talked to a lawyer about you for slander, which is a false spoken statement damaging a person's reputation. And hopefully everybody knows that truth is a defense to defamation, slander, libel, and everything you've been saying from what I can tell, is truthful. He says he tells the 911 person that he's they're all hiding from the window. Like, like what are they hiding from? Like, I thought that was very curious as well. He admits he didn't have a weapon. He knew exactly wh who you were. Um, he said your name. He spelled your name uh, correct. And so I thought that was, I, I just thought all that was funny. And, and you know, he, he kind of, he lied. He said, you know, that he had five or six cameras that we all saw. And, you know, facing us. And I made sure that the camera crew and myself stayed on the public uh, public street. You were the one who walked up to the door. And according to United States versus Santana, United States Supreme Court case, um, the threshold going up to anyone's home is a public place because there's no expectations of privacy. I knew that. That's why it's, it's absolutely legal to go up and knock on the door. Um, they have a choice whether or not to answer. They chose not to answer. They chose to call the police instead. And one thing, Chris, that I think is interesting, the police never asked us to leave. Do you remember that? They never said, hey, guys, get out of here. I expected right. them to say that. They, they could have said it. They really can't. Legally, they can't say it. They didn't say it. They did everything proper. In my well, they were, they were, they, I, I must say, you know, the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, the deputy responded and, you know, poor guys like, oh, God, this is what I got to do today. Chris Hansen and Mike Morris and the team are out here and. And, you know, it's, it's it's almost the end of my shift. You know what? I got to go deal with right. this. And, but he was very, very deferential. And as I was and you were to him and just to, I gave him the whole rundown of what we did. And he, you know, again, it wasn't his position to make a public statement for the sheriff or the sheriff's department. They have press people to do that. And I understand that. And obviously, I've been in contact with the, the fellow out there who's been uh, the public information officer for some 20 years. Um, a sergeant showed up after that. He was also, you know, very understanding. And we, you know, I, I told him straight up, we're not going back to the door. I, but, the, but the thing that gets to me or that, that sticks out to me, I guess, is the better way to put it. He could have come to the door and said, look, Chris, I get you want to talk to me. I know I've offered you an opportunity to be on my show, um, but I'm just not I'm not doing this today. Please respect the fact that uh, this is my home. Um, I need you to leave now. And I would have said, fine. Right. I mean, it, it's all, it, it all doesn't make sense. I mean, he, he tweeted several times for an interview. I contacted him. He didn't respond. Um, and then, and then he calls the police on you saying, you know, you know, just some bizarre things. His name isn't Greg. You're calling his, you're, you were calling his name Greg through the door. Well, he goes I mean, by James. I, I, who know him, no, but he's changed his name. It's, you know, in one minute it's James Avro. The next minute it's James Jackson. He says James Jackson on the 911 call tape. And then he calls back a second time and says, where are you guys? And the operator says, well, you know, I've got you on my screen still. The, the deputies are on their way. Is he doing anything weird? Does he have a weapon? No, 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 we're fine. Do you expect it? Right, no, 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 it's fine. They asked, has something changed? It was only a few minutes later. So he was getting antsy because you did actually go up to the door twice, if you remember. Um, you gave him some time to think about it. You came back. We conferred a little bit. You went back to the door a second time. I don't know if that's when he called the police uh, the second time, but um, it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, the, the, the police were getting annoyed with him. You could tell on, the, on those tapes, like, why are you calling me back? Um, somebody's on the the police came, they went into the home, they conferred with them, um, they came back, and literally they just looked at us and said, if you guys are going to stick around on the street, that's fine, and we'll stick around too, right. or let us know when, when you're going. We yeah, have a flight. We were, we were at that point, so we up, except for shooting a couple on camera pieces. I thought it was interesting, though, that what that tape showed, what our visit showed, 
first of all, was that uh, uh, not what he was saying in his videos, in contrary to what uh, he was saying in his videos, in contrast to what he was saying in the videos, he's not homeless. He's not living in a tent, as he said. Um, apparently not divorced from Kai. They're in the house together. Um, you know, all that is apparently one big act to garner some sort of sympathy or a lot of people have suggested, and you and I talked about this, ginning up some sort of a, you know, mental psychological defense should he face criminal charges in the near future. Yeah, I I think that um, the 911 tape was a big downfall for him because it, it he was he sounded I mean he said some untrue things but he didn't sound crazy he didn't sound like the guy that's in his videos I'm getting more and more convinced that it's just you know the videos and the crying and the gyrating on the floor in his underwear is just all a big entertainment game which is his right and people can and watch it. That doesn't have anything to do with him being a, a predator, as you call him, and, and all the other allegations. Um, but he's take, he, he's he's just, I mean, the, the jig is up. I mean, it's time, it's, it's either time for um, YouTube to do something. Um, and I am, I have reached out to uh, YouTube several times trying to get you an interview. I'm still pursuing that. It's their right to sit down or not sit down. It's their right to moderate these type of channels it makes no sense that if, if he's using this channel to groom and find girls and we have evidence of that we have five six seven girls saying that and i'm sure there's many many more out there um it, it, they should do something but you know google owns youtube and google has recently come out saying that we are not going to take down political ads if they have lies in them and i watched that and i thought about you chris and i thought about this like if they're not going to take down ads that have lies in them well, they're going to leave people like this up with channels. They're going to demonetize channels for silly reasons, like if you say the word predator or whatever. And it just, it, it the rules don't make sense. I think that they should be held accountable. I think they should sit down and at least answer questions. And I was also thinking about this when you, when you were talking to Jacqueline. You know, sometimes, they, what if they haven't seen these? Like, there's millions of videos posted every day. Somebody like you needs to sit down and spoon feed it to her, in my opinion, like show her the videos, show her the craziness, show her the interviews and make a, and let them make a rational, informed decision that this person should be deplatformed. This should, person should not be making money um, on your platform, YouTube. And I'm going to work hard to get you that interview um, and it's up to them. Much appreciated there. But I also think it's important, Mike, to take a little bit of time here and, and specifically talk about the young women victims in this case. Vulnerable at the time of their uh, exposure to Onision, uh, some in person, some at that house where we visited, some at a previous house, some online in, right. you know, transmissions and communications uh, with uh, both Kai and uh, Greg James Onision. So a couple of things are going on here behind the scenes. One, you know, I feel an extended responsibility because these young women have poured their hearts out to us on this show. And, and um, you know, this at the end of the day is all about the victims. You know, um, they've been in contact with professionals in terms of mental health. We're trying to help there. In, in at least one case, one of the young women has been in contact with you uh, and some of the others are expected to do so in the in the near future. What legal recourse do these young women have? One against Onision civilly, and clearly we know through our sources that the FBI is investigating. And there was there was even an investigation before we started digging around here, but it's it's ramped up since we started digging around because we've had evidence that the FBI wants. <clears throat> And two, what's the responsibility of YouTube here? Can they be held well, accountable for Let me take the second part first. I mean, YouTube really doesn't have a uh, legal responsibility. They have a moral responsibility. But YouTube and platforms like this have never, that I've seen, been held accountable for these type of actions. I mean, you know, you have the First Amendment, of course, that you mentioned earlier. But they they are not monitoring. They're not taking down unless it's 
absolutely outrageous and, and their formulas and their algorithms, how they're taking them down, I don't even know. But I've never actually seen someone successful in suing them for monetary damages. Not saying that it can't happen. I think that this is a fluid situation. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a, a, a lawsuit against them if we can prove an absolute causal connection between YouTube allowing someone to have a platform and, and injuries and damages. But it's it's a very complicated thing. My team is looking at it, but it's not straightforward and it's, it's pretty cutting edge and new. As far as suing uh, James Jackson, his current name, um, civilly, my team's also looking at that as well for things such as assault, uh, intentional infliction of emotional distress. Um, we have some conspiracy theories that we're working out between Kai and him for the grooming charges. Um, and, and there's lots of criminal charges, you know, like you mentioned earlier, the, the pornography and, and transporting minors between states, interstate, U.S., federal laws that are violating. And as you mentioned several times, that the FBI is, is investigating, um, possibly also the state attorney's office as well. Washington State uh, Police and Attorney Office is investigating those crimes. So, but, you know, there's clearly been um, if, if what the, all, uh, all the women are saying and all the girls are saying, there's been assault, you know, that these, they've been assaulted. They've, they've been harmed um, with intentional infliction of emotional distress. You, you have to prove damages. You have to prove the elements of these civil, of these civil um, torts. And most importantly, not most importantly, an important aspect is, is Kai and Jackson collectible? Um, and it doesn't always matter because, you know, you could always take it. If they're not collectible right now, you could take a judgment. If they come into money later. Well, some of this is just proof. I mean, none of these young women are out to get rich. I, I think they just want justice is well, my impression. From- money isn't going to bring justice, right? That's going to be justice. No, I the way I look at it. In the perfect case, you get justice and compensation for, for the harm. But, right. I mean, really, at some level, just about holding this guy accountable, don't you think? Yeah. And there's two ways to do it criminally and we can do it out of, on monetary damages uh and and i'm not saying that getting judgment against them so they can't make money on these stations actually that would be now that we're talking it out would be good justice against them because they wouldn't be able to make money on this so it's definitely something we're looking into um some of the girls never even met and, and some of the harm is done via text message, done via Facebook, done via internet transmission. And what about which is- that stalking, harassment, online, targeting some of these young women in videos? I mean, you heard Jacqueline Glenn talk about it just a few moments ago, but that's not a unique case. I mean, he went after Shiloh and, yeah. and uh, well, Sarah it's and so many of the others in a very public, aggressive, um, you know, vicious way. So the definition of assault, you know, I think is interesting. It's the intentional act by one person that creates an apprehension in another of imminent, harmful, or offensive contact. It doesn't, there's, there doesn't, there's no touching involved. So it, it, it technically can be done via email, text message and whatnot. So, you know, we're looking into that. I mean, I think, I think that there can be um, a potential case um, brought against them for these, for these, um, things that they've been doing over, over these past few years. I am talking to certain people and I'm going to hold some attorney client privileges there until, until things can go public. So uh, we are, we are definitely, um, um, there was definitely um, a potential case there. And obviously more people who come forward helps with the evidence. So I would encourage them to contact you the pri- on private channels to, you know, to let you know, because if we ever do move forward, the more people um, that come forward would, would would be helpful. Mike Morris, thank you very much for your insight tonight. Final thoughts? Um, you know, I think that there's going to be much more information to prove that a lot of the things that he um, said were, were untrue. We have a lot of audio tape that you haven't released yet that I'm excited for the public to hear um, when you when you decide to, to release it. There's lots of footage from our investigation that I think people will find interesting about finding the hotel and looking at the pillows and looking at the reflection and the glass. It's quite a process. What's that? 
I said it was quite a process looking it, back at it. It was exciting. For me, it was my first time doing this with you, and I, I, I uh, f- found it very um, interesting, and, and it was a little, it was entertaining. And um, But driving around Tacoma, trying to find the exact hotel, looking at different hotels, talking to a lot of people, nailing down the floor, looking at all the pillows in the room to see where he filmed it. I thought, I mean, and we have that all, a lot of that on tape. So I think, I think your audience is going to really um, find that all fascinating, um, see what a um, great journalist you are, and, um, and, and finally getting to the truth um, and, and letting the truth be known. Mike Morris, thank you very much. I'll speak with you very soon. Thanks okay, for being here. My on pleasure. Show. All right. Pleasure. Talk soon. So, Mike mentioned the journey of discovery continues. It's what I think is the most fascinating and most important part of uh, what we do, whether it's here uh, on this channel or whether it's on uh, traditional TV. I can tell you this the visit was worthwhile. The 911 call has opened a Pandora's box. And I'm getting a steady stream of information that is going to lead us to some very uncomfortable truths for Onision, Greg, James, and Kai. That information is headed towards me now, and it will be headed towards you very soon. I thank you for tuning in on this uh, rather long version of the show, but uh, fascinating. Jacqueline Glenn, Mike Morris, much more to come. You guys have a wonderful rest of the week, and I'll see you very soon. Take care and good night.